Good morning, animal friends. Today we pay homage to Martin Luther King Jr., who, although I couldn't find a record of him actually ever sharing his life with a pet, there's a very famous photograph of him with a dog in a police car, and I actually just saw that the Gray Muzzle Organization, of which I'm a huge fan, just posted that on Facebook. So if you can't find it anywhere else, go to the Facebook page for Gray Muzzle. But Martin Luther's um, words, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere, ring true to mistreatment of our animal friends as well. So as I'll share at the end of today's video, I'm sure he was really, in fact, a friend to the animals. Today also is my mom-in-law's birthday. She would have been 88, so I'm sending super long distance hugs to heaven and thanking her for raising two sons who get it in regards to the love and gentle spirit that our animals have and the true joy in sharing their lives with dogs. Okay, subject at hand. And I hope you can see I'm trying to channel my feline side today with my meow earrings. But it is National Train Your Dog Month. And many dogs also have feline siblings. But even if they don't, those of you who share your lives with a cat can enhance your bond by doing a little training. Training will actually sharpen your cat's mind, give her exercise, and prevent unwanted behaviors like obsessive grooming, for instance, or scratching on your furniture. It can also create a safer, happier, happier environment for both of you if you teach her not only manners, but some things to keep her out of harm's way. How many of you out there have cats? Go ahead and write me a note here if you do and if you've ever tried to give it a go at giving them any sort of um, training. Now, you do have to realize that not every cat is a rocket scientist. Just like dogs and humans, intelligence varies and so does trainability. Persians and exotic short hairs are like the most laid back and you know you're probably not going to get them to leap through a flaming ring of fire but you know maybe that makes them the smartest breed of all um, abyssinians are very acrobatic so you might get them to do some actual trick training um, with their gla their graceful um, you know maneuvers american short hairs and domestic short hairs are very easygoing they're people watchers so you know our animals learn by watching others and that just might, you know, be really good for trick training or even just setting an example because if the cat watches you, she's going to learn what you're doing. Bengals um, are good at turning on water faucets. So maybe those are the kind of things that you might want to teach them to do things with little switches. Um, and Siamese actually take to leash training pretty well. They're a very curious breed of cat. But you can teach any cat of any age at any time as long as you have the commitment and patience to do so. First thing I want to mention, and whether it's a dog, a cat, a squirrel, a ferret, or a horse, whomever you're training, even you know a younger human or an older human for that matter, never punish. Only use positive reinforcement and end every training session on a good note. When something good has happened, when they've done what you've wanted, reward them and stop for the day or stop for that session. We don't ever want to end on a bad note. Clicker training is one of the best ways actually to train cats because it allows you to shape a behavior in a small little doable bit and allows you to quickly reinforce when they're doing what you want. You can purchase a clicker or you can actually just make a clicking sound with your mouth, you know, kind of like a or you can even use like a little kissing sound. Mwah, mwah. The, any little sound like that, if you don't have an actual clicker, as long as you do it consistently and make it sound relatively the same, can work well for the cat. The key is to make the sound immediately after the desired behavior has occurred, and then to reinforce it, reward with the treat. Um, you just do that every time the kitty um, rewards. Oh, hey, Scott, hey, Paul, nice to see you both out there in kitty cat land today. Another um, method of training cats is targeting. And what that is, is actually teaching them to like touch their nose to a pencil, you know, something along those lines or to your hand. And again, the second they do that, you give the click, you make the clicking sound with your mouth, whatever you choose to do, and you reinforce it with a treat. Um, 
cats are very good at wanting to actually rub up against things or put their faces to things because you know the only two places cats actually have scent glands are in their cheeks and in their paws so that's why very often you'll find cats needing different things certainly it has something to do with them being kittens and nursing on their mom but it's also a way that they leave their scent behind also that's why cats will come up and rub against your leg or rub against the edge of the sofa they're marking their territory and sometimes their territory includes us now when you're doing training for cats it's really important that you give them a special treat that it's not just their regular kibble or whatever little crunchy or soft chew or whatever it is they normally get in order for them to do something special for you um, it's important that you give them something special in return Boiled chicken is fine, small little bits or little pieces of tuna if they just don't get that very often. Um, as you all know, tuna isn't a good regular diet for cats. It lacks taurine, one of the important amino acids that helps with heart and other development. So it's not you know, a good thing for a cat to have nothing but tuna, but as a special treat, it's great. Uh, what a lot of kitty cat trainers um, use are what are called bonito flakes. It's spelled B-O-N-I-T-O. -O. Um, I think it's actually the Japanese katsogushi. Uh, it's the skipjack tuna. Uh, I don't know if any of you have ever had skipjack tuna. Um, I know, at least back in California in the Trader Joe's, they used to sell that in cans. Skipjack is just, it's a striped tuna. It has other... Um, names to it, but for the Bonito Flakes, it's actually dried, smoked, and fermented, and cats love it. So it makes a great little training treat, something easy to have at hand. Um, but just remember then, whatever you choose for your training treat, only use it for training, and not every time the cat now comes up and rubs against your leg or taps your hand. Only, you know, use that specifically for the training sessions. And, you know, there's never any need to give a sweet treat to a cat. Cats actually lack um, the base pairs of the amino acids in their DNA, and they don't taste sweet. So they may taste a lot of things, but they don't taste sweet. Some things you can do um, for the pet safety as well as fun is to teach them to go to place or to go under a bed or to go into their crate. Um, this can be really useful if you have some rowdy children or other animals around or, you know, if there's a particularly noise time, you know, say the 4th of July or the New Year's Eve fireworks, it's a great thing to um, teach them to go to their place or whatever term you want to use. I think leave it is such an important term, you know, coming from the Pet Safety Crusader, but if you can teach them not to eat something off the floor or in the case of our cats, off the countertop or the shelf or the top of the refrigerator or wherever they happen to roam, but it's just so important to teach them that cue. So try the try the clicker training, you know, and you know, put some things down. Don't use hazardous things, but put something down that won't hurt them and teach them to leave it. Just in case they make a mistake initially, you're not, you know, running to the emergency room. I think sit and stay are also so important. And I know it may sound like we're talking about dogs, and dogs and cats are two completely different beings. But um, manners, whether it's for humans, dogs, cats, or other species, you know, are very similar. And sit is kind of, especially in the dog world, something I think of as the animal saying please, in that, you know, he, the animal's being polite if he sits for you rather than jumping up on you or rather than dashing out the door. And I think it can work the same in the kit, kitty cat world, too. Um, I know there's always the joke about, you know, cats have staff, but, you know, cats are loving beings and we love them and share our lives with them, too. And it just makes life um, more joyful and we can keep them safe if they will sit rather than dashing out the door every time we try to go at it because you don't want to lose your cat and have, you know, terrible things happen, being hit by a car or endangered by another animal. So sit is a wonderful thing to teach them via the treats and the clicker training. Another um, uh, cue would be, you know, stay. But I think, you know, as long as they'll stay in that sit position, we're in good shape. But this is, again, for safety's sake. Um, you know, if, if when they're seeing out the window, they're seeing that bird or that squirrel. And for whatever reason, you know, we have the screens on the windows, which we always need to have extra tight if we have kitties in the house. But if you can teach them a sit and a stay, they can enjoy the nature, but um, hopefully not dash through it or dash out a door. 
Now, if you're up to fun things, I don't know if any of you watched the video I posted the other day about the acro cats that actually have like a little circus and play the drums and do all kinds of things. Um, obviously, it can be done with patience. Uh, different things you can teach or for a cat to shake, which would be similar to the targeting where you're teaching her to touch her paw, touch her paw, uh, touch her paw to your hand. Um, another one would be to give kisses. And that, again, would be a targeting type of training where you're just teaching her to touch her nose here. And actually, then you won't get a super sloppy kiss like you would um, with your, your dog. You're probably going to get a much more gentle kiss, but it can be very rewarding to do as well. Different things like uh, lie down, jump up onto a, you know, a chair or a counter or a hassock can be a good um, training trick. It might be, you know, a lifesaver sometime if you're needing to get the uh, the cat out of harm's way. But on the video I showed you yesterday, there are certainly things you can teach cats like play the piano, the banjo, the guitar. Yeah, right. But they, they can do it because they can move their paw and you can teach that stroke, which isn't a whole lot different than raising their paw. It's moving the paw downward. High five is always fun. Well, where's my hand? I'm looking on the camera here and I think I raised it too high. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, that's something else sometimes people want to do. And you're going to say, well, why am I teaching my cat these things? Well, I certainly hope you understand why we're teaching the cat the certain cues for safety. But some of these other ones just stimulate a cat's mind. We're doing so many thing to help, things to help our cats live longer, happier, healthier lives by our sides. But we need to keep the brain stimulated. Um, blood and oxygen need to get to that brain at all times to nurture it and, and you know, provide it the necessary um, building blocks to keep those brain cells going. And very often cats don't get as much stimulation or exercise as our dogs do. I always say the best exercise for a cat is adopting a second cat. But that may not be, um, you know, in the cards for you. Or you may just have two lazy kitty cats. So anything you can do to get them moving, to stimulate their mind, hopefully will keep, you know, those um, blood cells and oxygen going to the brain and nurturing it for many, many years to come. And, you know, preventing a form of cognitive dysfunction or kitty Alzheimer's. There were other things I investigated, like, yeah, you can teach your kitty to use the toilet. Personally, I would probably just prefer to stick to the litter box, but some people may find that more convenient. Um, do any of you pet sitters out there actually have a client, or have you ever tried to tra train a cat to use a toilet? I'd love to hear about it. You know, send me a note here. But probably the best time to train a cat, just like a dog, is when they're hungry. Um, you know, and they want those special treats. So right before meal, meal time, but, you know, in just 10 or 15 minute increments. Hello, Elaine. What a delight to see you out there. But keep those training sessions short, you know, maybe twice a day. And, um, you know, actually, it isn't that cats can't be trained. It's finding the human that has the fortitude and the um, just the consistency and the patience to outlast the cat. So, you know, you've got to think about really being able to commit to this, but I think it can be very rewarding. You can teach your cat a few tricks when company comes over, but more importantly, you can teach some tricks to keep your cat safe and also to keep those brain cells active for many, many long years ahead with you. And probably the best trick that's going to come out of all of it is that your cat will have trained you, in fact, in some way you didn't even imagine. As we conclude for today, I'm going to remind you to come back here on Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern time when we're going to talk a little bit about dog training. And if after we sign off you have any questions or comments, please feel free to read them. I, I mean, leave them. I will certainly read them and get back to you. But since it is Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday, I would like to conclude with a quote that just warms my heart. And remember, again, look for that photograph. A great, you know, I'll probably post it here afterwards as well. But it's currently, I noticed on the Gray Muzzle Facebook page of Martin Luther with a police dog. But here's the quote I'd like to conclude with for today. And thank you guys so much for joining in. Never, never be afraid to do what's right especially if the well-being of a person or an animal is at stake. Society's punishments are small compared to the wounds we inflict on our soul when we look the other way. Martin Luther King.
Love you all for loving the animals, and I look forward to seeing you on Thursday. Bye-bye for now, and have a great day off, those of you that do.